For many years, the for in loop has been available for iterating over an object. As opposed to general objects, arrays have so many options available for working with the elements. In this tutorial, we're going to look at accessing the keys and values of an object through an array. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description. I really appreciate the support. And if you would like, there are other ways to support the channel, which you can find in the description. Now, the for in loop works great for iterating over an object. And we will look at that first. But sometimes you need a bit more flexibility. And that flexibility is offered through arrays. So we will look at three object static methods for converting properties to arrays. These static methods are object.keys, object.values, and object.entries. So here is an object. If you've watched many of my videos, you probably realize that I do a lot of work with online courses. A lot of my examples represent students or testing or something like that because that's what I work with most of the time. Well, this object is no different. But the data has not been consistently entered, especially when we're looking at the scores there. Now, with the for in loop, we can see all the properties and the corresponding values. And you can see how we set that up. We declare a variable inside the parentheses, and that will become the key of the key value pairs inside of whatever object we're looping over, in this case, student one. And then we can log out the key this way we can then log out the value by using square brackets to access that value inside of the object. And so if we just look at the console and see what shows up there, we get the key and then we get the value, key value, and so on, all the way down to the end. So that works great. But sometimes it may be easier to accomplish something with an array of values. And we can convert the keys, or we can convert the values, or we can convert both of those to an array using these object static methods. Let me just show you them really quick, and then I'll do a, a really quick example. So let's say I wanted to get the keys as an array. I do object.keys. This is the static method. And then I pass in the object that I want to get those from. And you can see it returns an array. And each element is a key, a key from the key value pairs. Now the values, we would grab the same way, but we use the value static method. And there's all of our values. Now if you wanted both of them together, you can get an array of arrays. Let me show you that really quick. That is object.entries. Now notice it's an array of array. If we open that up, each subarray has first the key, then the value. We can see how that's set up there. So that may be a way you want to work with the object as well. Now, as I mentioned, arrays are much more flexible. There's a lot more ways to work with arrays than there are with general objects. And so by converting something to an array or converting the properties to an array, it might make it easier to solve a particular problem or more straightforward. Let me just show one example. Let's say I wanted to create a get scores function and it's just going to grab all the scores from here. Anything that's a number, basically what we're going to do. And so we're gonna pass in an object so I can make this work for any object that's passed in. Say I have a number of these objects to go through and I need to pull out those scores. So what we want this function to do is return scores. And so we'll return the results of object.values. So there we get an array of the values of whatever object is passed in. So now we have an array. But if we want that array to only include scores, I need to check and make sure things are a number. 
That's one bit of information I know about this object, that all the scores will be a number. Even if they're entered as a string, they can be course to a number. So they are like a number. But I don't want to get any Booleans. Booleans can also be course to a number. For example, let me show you that really quick. If I come down here and I do, and I do number and then pass in a Boolean value, that's converted to a one. A false would be converted to a zero. So those would be considered numbers as well using the technique I'm going to for this particular function. So just wanted to point that out. So I have arrays here. So now I can use any of the methods that are available for arrays to work with that. And there are a number of those methods that are available. I'm going to use filter in this case. Now, a filter is something you're not familiar with. I'll include a link to tutorial on that, on some of those different array methods. But what filter allows me to do is take an array and filter out those values I do not want, and it returns an array. And so basically what I get back is an array with only the values I want. And I just want values that are numbers or that can be numbers. So that's what I'm going to do with filter. Now the way filter works is you need to pass in a callback function. And that callback function acts on every element in the array. So filter is going to iterate through every element in this array that's created using object.values. It's going to iterate on that and into its callback function, which I'm now going to define, it's going to pass each of those values. And I'll store that in this variable val. Now I'll just use an arrow function to define this. If that's new to you, I'll include a link tutorial on that as well. So each of the elements from the array are going to be placed into this variable. And now what am I going to do with that? I'm going to check to see if it's a number. So here's how I can do that. Is not a number will return true if it's not a number. So we can just reverse that with the logical not operator. We can reverse that and so it'll return true. And because that returns true, what it's going to do is place that value into our new array. And then that array will be returned from this function. So this is going to get placed into the new array if true is returned from this function. And right now, true will be returned for everything that's a number because I use the logical not to reverse the is any n. However, that will also be returned for this Boolean. So I'm going to eliminate that. And type of val not equal to Boolean. So I'll just eliminate any Boolean value that could be there. And so that should just return an array of scores for me. So let's just look at that really quick. Now there may be better ways to do this type of function, but I just wanted to illustrate that sometimes if you convert the properties or the keys or the values to an array, they can be easier to work with. Save that. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that. We'll refresh and then I want to look at scores. And there we get all of the scores. We don't have the Boolean. Let me just show you what would happen if we didn't have this part here. If I remove that part. Refresh and then scores. Notice we get that true value because that basically by is nan is considered a number because it can be coerced to a number just like 85 is a string but it can be coerced to a number all right so a simple example of converting the values to an array and then being able to do something more with it using some of those array methods all right as mentioned please hit that like button and subscribe and remember the discount links to my courses in the description section.
If you'd like to be notified about new releases, new tutorials that I create, click the bell button. I release a new tutorial each week, or at least I try to. And once again, thanks for watching.